Are you a self-storage owner or operator looking for service providers to help at your facility? Well, the Storage Business Owners Alliance, also known as the SBOA, has you covered. The SBOA is the premier online hub for connecting self-storage owners and operators to industry-leading products and service providers. We provide one-stop shopping for your business with exclusive offers to save time and money. At the SBOA, we believe by coming together, we help owners and operators grow revenue, gain purchasing power, reduce expenses, improve efficiencies, and increase profitability. We also offer many resources such as our conferences and self storage unlock webinars to help self storage owners and operators gain the knowledge needed to become more competitive in the industry. To become an SBOA member or to find out more information, please visit www dot the sboa.com today. We can't wait for you to join the Alliance. Good afternoon and happy Thursday, self-storage industry. We haven't done one of these in a couple months, so welcome back to Self Storage Unlocked, produced and powered by the SBOA. My name is Jessica Johnson. I'm the vice president of the Storage Business Owners Alliance, better known as the SBOA. For any of those out there that don't know me, um, we do this at least twice a month, sometimes three times a month, depending on the month. This is a free educational webinar for all of those in the self-storage industry today. Super excited about today's live lineup and content that we have for you. Today, we're going to talk all about websites and the importance of website structure and functionality, especially as it relates to your self-storage facility and business. Uh, so before we get started, I wanted to go over just a few quick housekeeping items. The comments area, the chat area, that's where you will ask live questions to our panelists. So please don't be shy. If you have questions, feel free to interrupt and ask those questions as we go. Don't wait until the end. Also, there is a poll section. We have a ton of poll questions for you today. We like to ask poll questions so we can get to know you and your business better and figure out how we can assist you and help you in the future of your business. So if you would take a minute and go watch, I'm sorry, not go watch, go answer those poll questions for us. Uh, we'd love to get that data from you and get to know you a little bit better. And then on the left-hand side of the screen, you will see a section that says Expo. All of our different companies that are represented here today, their information are in the Expo area. So if you could kindly go check each one of these companies out, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. So before we get started, I did want to give do a quick word from one of our sponsors today, Calcumate. So stand by. Are your potential customers looking for storage but not sure how much they need? Calcumate's 3D calculator is built to quickly and accurately estimate storage needs for fixed storage, mobile pods, and container storage. Fast, accurate, and easy to use, Calcumate can be customized to suit your storage facility and will plug in seamlessly into any existing website. Calcumate is the perfect tool for customers to use directly or for sales teams looking to provide accurate quotes. No commitments. Cancel any time with no charges until after your free month trial. Calculate. Show your customers how much space they need instantly. 
Awesome. All right. Thank you, Calcum Yay, for being our sponsor for today. And I'm going to go ahead and get started and announce my panelists. So first up, I have Amir. Amir, I should have asked you how to say your last name, but I'm going to take a shot at it. Caballero? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me hear the real version. <laughs> Caballero. Oh, well, yeah. listen, I can't roll my R's like that. So <laughs> I'll let you say your name from here on forward. Uh, Amir, it's over from G5. So Amir, give the audience a brief rundown of who you are, how long you've been in the industry, and what you do over at G5. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Jessica. So again, my name is Amir Caballero. I am with G5. Um, I've been within the self-storage industry for nine years now. Uh, started off very, very early on on the uh, tech side, on the software side, and transitioned slowly uh, more into customer-facing roles, and just uh, recently I joined the G5 team. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for being here. And Amir, you are a senator, or were a senator uh, for SSAYLG, correct? Yes, yes, I was. Uh, I was part of the education committee, so I, we put together a few of um, the YOG SSA sessions for uh, for education. And I led that team for a little bit. Um, awesome. I haven't aged out, luckily, but I, I do need to become. <laughs> I need. I do need to become active again. I don't want to talk about the aging out process. It's a very <laughs> sensitive subject for me. So uh, with that being said, we will move on to our next panelist. <laughs> Amir, thanks for being here today. Of course. All right. Up next, I have Joshua Webb from Calcumate. Hey, Josh. Hello. Much more uh, easy to say, but less exotic surname. <laughs> just the, uh, right. just the web. <laughs> I love it. Josh, give us a rundown of who you are, how long you've been in the industry, and what you do over at Calcumate. Yeah, sure thing. So um, I used to be marketing manager for a mobile storage company over in Australia from 2018. Uh, company called Taxi Box, where we were delivering the kind of pods out to people's homes. As part of my time there, a project managed the launch of a storage calculator software, which we desperately needed on the website and couldn't find any solution that fit the bill for us. We built one ourselves. That took off so well that we thought, well, let's try and sell this thing and see if anyone else would be interested in the storage industry. And it's snowballed so much that now this is my day job. So I've moved back to the UK and now I'm running this thing from here. I still have a hand in with Taxi Box, and that's why I want to kind of mainly talk on today. But uh, yeah, predominantly my day today is with the software now. Awesome. And I can't wait for later in the presentation for you to explain this software to everyone. I, I adore it. I think it's a great added tool that all websites should have if they don't have it. So thanks for being here today, Josh. Thanks. All uh, right. And then next up, I have Rodolfo Ramirez. I don't have to roll those R's, do I? <laughs> it's not like you a don't, American you name. Don't. <clears throat> I mean, hey, <laughs> it's, it's exotic. So Amir and I, uh, you know, have some Super. background. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, Rodolfo, you're with Swivel. Give us the rundown of who you yeah. are, what you do over at Swivel, and how long you've been in the industry. For sure. And thank you for having me. Uh, so, yeah, I've been in the industry for four years now. Um, I'm three time founder. I'm currently uh, co founder and CEO of Swivel. Uh, my background is in conversational design, uh, good market strategy, and growth marketing. Um, Swivel, you know, we're the only self storage AI assistant. And so think of us as a Siri or Alexa uh, powering your website conversations and engagement, right? Um, talking to your customers through web chat, we can do SMS and as we get further in our roadmap, uh, voice. And so ultimately we're helping operators uh, really generate more revenue with lower costs through automated assistance. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for that rundown and for being here today. Now I'm going to bring everybody back up and we're going to get this conversation started. So before we get started, um, if anyone was paying attention to all of those introductions, except for myself, we each said, uh, how long we've been in the industry. So audience, for some fun engagement, if you want to take a guess at how many years combined experience this panel on screen has today, enter those responses into the chat area. The person that is closest will get a Amazon gift card from the SBOA. So how many total years combined does this panel, me, Amir, Rodolfo, and Josh have in the industry? Um, all right, guys. So I keep 
hating to always have to bring up COVID in any conversation that I have. However, it's very relative to self-storage and the performance that our industry has seen. And I have a guest in the background. <laughs> um, can you go out, buddy? <laughs> My son decided he wants to crash. Um, but with COVID, our industry did really well. However, we saw a huge shift from walk-ins and people coming in person into offices because offices were shut down to moving to more of an automated uh, technology standpoint. So obviously websites are playing a huge role into that. So guys, give me just each one of you your a brief opinion on how critical you think a website is in the digital era for a self-storage owner and operator, because there are some out there that still don't even have websites for their location. So uh, Amir, I'll start with you. Oh, I mean, it's it's extremely critical, right? So if you think of a website and the basis of, what, of a website, it's the point to you having an office that's open virtually 24 seven, right? So you definitely wanna have a lot of key components available on your website, pricing, you know, Calcumate, um, an AI chatbot to continue those type of conversations and interactions. So it's extremely critical, especially, you know, an unforeseen thing like COVID, right? Nobody was expecting it. So to have website already built structurally that could enhance a lot of these features and build onto it, it's extremely critical. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Josh, how about you? Yeah, I think it's a, well, it's a very, very apt example. So with Taxi Box in March, 2020, we had our best ever month. And then in April, 2020, we had our worst ever month. And we mm -hmm. weren't sure why, um, but through the website, through looking at the numbers, we were able to work out that it was because we were, there was a massive decrease in the rental market and the moving market, which is a big player for us. But we also saw there was a massive increase in traffic that was 18 to 24 year olds. It was everyone downsizing, moving back in with mom and dad. Because we had a website structure in place, because we had the tracking in place, it meant we could change tack very quickly, stop targeting the moving market because that's not going to shift start targeting the the younger audience people moving back in with mom and dad and it meant we could just shift the business more dynamically and far quicker than we could have done if we didn't have that structure already set up and it could have massively impacted our bottom line yeah absolutely i agree completely how about you rodolfo yeah i mean to just kind of repeat and voice what amir and, and josh said you know your website is literally your online billboard, right? You're like, like I'm here to say your digital storefront. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, in the industry probably used to rely on a lot of like the foot traffic, uh, you know, billboards, kind of signage, newspaper ads. Uh, but that isn't really the case anymore. Right. The hard truth is that, you know, businesses need to start providing an excellent uh, online experience need to really start investing in that because that stuff does no longer like no longer matches what how and people prefer to buy right and so you know you need to be where your customers are it's not really the other way around um and so to provide that experience you know right now people think about it like another industry like e-commerce that has really revolutionized i think like the online shopping experience uh, you have to start really taking bits and, and information from how other industries have uh, modernized kind of the whole experience and start bringing that into self-storage. Because um, now you have to rely on things like, you know, uh, before someone buys something, what they usually do, they look at reviews, right? Uh, they look at what other people's opinions are about a specific thing. So you have to start thinking about how these different things um, might impact your strategy, right? To, to get eyeballs, to get people to come to your stores and, and, and buy from you ultimately. So um, again, super important. Yeah, totally agree. So with the importance of it, you know, obviously, and I hear this a lot, especially from smaller owners and operators, they're like, yeah, I know I need a website, but man, I mean, I'm so small. I'm competing against REITs. How do I even get on that front page of Google for people to find me? So let's talk about that a little bit. Search engine optimization, better known as SEO and, and kind of the impacts that that has. And, you know, 
a lot of people think like they need these massive budgets to get on the front page and it's not necessarily the case in most situations so let's let's walk through that a little bit uh i'll start now in the middle with josh and i'll go to you first yeah absolutely so there's a there's a line i was pitched by an seo agency a while ago and it has kind of stuck with me the idea that your homepage is no longer your homepage anymore and that google is your homepage now so it's come a long way, Google, from just showing you the top 10 addresses for, you know, if you start self-storage in your area, top websites, it's now showing you maps and reviews, it's showing you FAQs as well. So all of that is being fed from websites. It's going through, it's pulling the data out and it's giving the customer that's searching on Google as much information as possible. So. If you are thinking, and probably quite rightly, do I need to be investing in SEO agency and having a recurring cost, and maybe that's it's not worthwhile, that's absolutely fine. And I won't agree if, if you're a smaller company. But what I would say is anything that you're putting onto your website, whether that's a blog post, a new facility page, new images, anything like that, just be thinking in the back of your mind, okay, so I'm adding this to my website, but how can I make sure that this is getting added to Google as well? So just there's so many resources and helpful documents out there that Google provide, which will tell you, look, this is the best practice here. If you want this, these reviews to pop up, make sure that you've got a reviews widget in. If you want your new facility page to load, make sure it's got your address and your out opening hours and all this kind of stuff that's popped in there. So absolutely, your strong SEO is crucial because it's the only way to get ahead and actually get people to your site in the first place. Uh, but it doesn't mean you need to break the bank to do it. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, there's a ton of free Google resources out there. So if you have uh, just a little bit of common sense to you, it's pretty easy to figure out once you read and walk through uh, the how to's on the guides that they have out there for you. Rodolfo, I'm going to move over to you. What, what's your thought there with SEO and optimization and all that? Sure. I mean, right now, um, it's really kind of like Josh was saying, a uh, uh, low barrier of entry, right, to win over customers, right? There's so much competition in the industry um, that you definitely need to invest in, you know, your SEO strategy, content strategy, right, uh, to really, you know, uh, differentiate yourself. Um, you know, and to, and to break it down, right, SEO is uh, what in the inside, you know, in that world is called, you know, organic search, right, versus what a lot of agencies um, and, and just operators are doing right now in general, that is uh, paid search or PPC, right? So or, or organic search is your way of attracting customers with your specific, uh, you know, keywords and key terms that you want to rank for, um, you know, the usability of your website, uh, et cetera. And some things that, you know, uh, Josh might not have mentioned is, you know, also outside of SEO, making sure your, your you know, homepage, is clear you have your uh you know think about the uh on top of the fold you know you have a clear call to action you have all your h1s h2s your meta tags your picture your images and photos need to be um addressed or linked successfully to text um also think about backlinks you know those are backlinks are counted as like votes for a page uh so the more links you have uh, the higher the rank is on Google search. Uh, also, I think that's something super important for operators right now is to think about local SEO. Kind of what I was kind of talking about earlier, uh, reviews, right? So get on Google business, um, show up on, on, you know, Google maps with those reviews, get on Yelp. Um, all those things uh, help drive that organic traffic back to your site. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to pop this comment up. This is from, from Rahim Amir. Hey, Rahim over at Mini Mall. It's good to see you here with us. He says, can't believe how many owners haven't even optimized their Google My Business page. Why pay for paper clicks when you haven't even gone after the low hanging leads, which, which is true. So Amir, for the audience, why don't you explain that a little bit further, what Rahim is trying to say here by this comment? Yeah, definitely. So there's, there's, three components that go into SEO, right? So it's going to be your off page, your technical and your on page, right? So what Raheem is specifically referring to is that off page SEO, which is exactly that low hanging fruit is optimizing your GBP, 
used to be known uh, as Google My Business. Um, so now <laughs> yeah. it's BBP, right? So optimizing it is making sure that the nap is correct, right? Not go to sleep and take a nap, but you know your name, your address, and your phone number. Um, if it's not, Google is going to flag them and say, hey, wait, there's it's not accurate here it's this information may not be up to date and may not be relevant right so aside mm -hmm. from the name your address your phone number um review responses right rodolfo you hit it spot on right responding to those reviews are critical because it shows engagement and it shows you communicating with the tenants right your audience um aside from that you know you definitely want to take advantage of that products section within your gbp profile as well showcasing hey aside from self storage unit sizes you know we offer boxes we offer um, packing tape we offer um, whatever additional products you may offer you want to take mm -hmm. advantage of that right so optimizing your google business profile is vitally important when it comes to um, SEO and that organic search. And that's that ultimately is one of the easiest way to, how you mentioned, Jessica, compete against the REITs in that sense. Yeah, and as Josh was saying earlier, there's agencies that you could totally hire to do that on your behalf if you don't feel comfortable. Or there are so many free resources on how to really go in, build that page out, make sure it's optimized, have good... Um, content, have good photos, what type of photos you should even be taking, you know, your storefront inside your office, exterior, interior photos, etc. So there's very easy how to guides out there if you want to take this on and try to do it yourself to save in the cost of hiring on an agency. But agency always would be, I believe, the best resource only because you're dealing with people that they live, eat, and breathe this every single day. So they're experts, right? You're not going to go to the cardiologist and have him do a root canal, or at least I sure hope you won't. Um, so I'm going to pop another quick comment up here from Jim Mooney. He just did a consulting job the other day. They have a website, but zero traffic due to, I think he meant bad, Google My Business Profile or Jeep. What is it called now, Amir? I always forget. GB, GBP, Google My Business. Google Google yeah. business profile, right? Yes. Google business profile. Yes. I have SBOA, SBOATI. I have so many acronyms running through this head. Like I don't need another one, but, uh, you know, Jim's right in saying that. I mean, it's a very easy, low cost, you know, the cost is your time to set it up and set it up correctly. Um, and you know, time does cost money. However, uh, this is something very easily executed that you can do yourself. So let's, Let's go into, I hear this a lot from smaller owner operators too. It's, I don't have a website, but my cousin's nephew's best friend's sister builds websites and she does a really good job. And you go out and you look at her portfolio and her work and she's built for, you know, all the local restaurants in the area, but nothing self-storage in the portfolio of her work. Do you guys think that that's a bad thing, a good thing? It's indifferent. Should you be getting some an expert that has built many self-storage websites before so they kind of know the protocol of the customer journey the layout the design feel or would you trust somebody that's never done this with online rentals reservations walk me through that um rodolfo i'll start with you first this time sure um you know i think it could be a double-edged sword but um, I, I would definitely look for someone, you know, uh, for someone that's trying to be a, a website developer for self storage, definitely had some experience, right? Um, you know, they can come from like, I was kind of alluding to the whole e commerce realm, right? Because I, I, I just think that industry has done the shopping experience, the thinking about the customer journey so well that you can get a lot of ideas, get a lot of lessons learned and apply it to self storage. I say that though, but I would say that there are some things that are specific, right? Uh, on the website development, like, you know, once we start talking about integrating to FMSs, right? Facility management softwares or the whole, you know, something that's important for your website to do right now, it's like taking online payments. Um, there's compliance and all that, that you need to understand uh, mm -hmm. before you start diving into that. And I know Amir, you can probably talk a little bit more about that, but outside of just the technical stuff for, for web developers and whatnot, I would also say, you know, having some experience in the industry would go a long way as well. 
Uh, and I say that because, you know, I, I've seen a lot of in the last four years, uh, I've seen and I've heard a lot about a lot of software that has turned over, right? They've kind of left the industry. Uh, they couldn't figure it out. And I think mm-hmm. it's it's a mix, right? Like self-storage has a like an old school feel to it. It's old school industry, but has been growing rapidly um, and technology adoption over the last few years because everything that's been happening plus you know, just the media exposure recent, recently. And so you have to keep that in mind. And you have to, if you're coming in, you have to really double down in the industry, uh, start building those relationships and, and really continue to show up, right? That being events, that being, you know, um, and, and, and panels like this, right? Because um, at the end of the day, you have to like provide value. You have to show that you, you, you're you doing what you're saying, uh, show customer examples, and then other, you know, the word of mouth will, will kind of spread and, and you'll start uh, getting some more of that business. But um, to your you know, original question, I, I do think there needs to be some experience for someone coming into the industry and, and really build that up. Yeah, agreed. Josh, how about you? Yeah, I think there's definitely an argument to be said about if you are a small operator and it's a very low cost and you can get this website running, but there's two things I would counter that with. One would be, uh, you know, if you're going to be doing Google Ads, if you're going to be spending your significant portion of your marketing budget on getting people to the website, it's important that the website does what you need it to do. Um, there's no point spending, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 K on Google Ads to send them to a website that doesn't function and doesn't fit the need. You're far better off taking a percentage of that, putting it into your website and really getting a, a high class website, which is going to do the job. The other thing I would also talk about, and as, as Rodolfo touched on with your kind of tenancy management software, there's going to be nothing more painful or more expensive if six months down the line, you find out your website can't do a thing that's functional and, and absolutely fundamental to connecting to your, to your tenancy management software. So that can be a real headache, a real pain to find, or you're going to have to go back to square one on this one and start from scratch because however much money you save the first time around, you're going to be spending, you know, X times that to actually get the fix in place as well. Yeah, for sure. Now, Mirad, I'll ask you a different question because this is Josh and uh, Rodolfo both brought this up. They're talking property management system, facility management system. There's different names out there. Um, Is it like a nice to have or a must have that your website integrate and talk to that property management system? Oh, it, it is a must have like in, in capital letters, right? The reason being is because <laughs> yeah. the reason being is because you, you definitely want to showcase on your website, your pricing and your availability, right? If, if mm-hmm. you don't have that um, in today's world, especially, you know, Josh mentioned it earlier, right? The, the age tendencies are now younger profile, right? And what does that mean? The younger people that are searching for anything online, you know, because of TikTok, because of Snapchat, they're wanting things instantly and they prefer not to communicate with anybody. Right. So, so the reason why you must have that integration with your, with your FMS, right. Your, your facility management software is to showcase, Hey, I do have these available units open. This is a price point. If it's not available, then please, you know, submit a, a, res- a reservation request or call in for more information, and maybe we could work out a deal, right? If I don't have a five by five, maybe I could offer you a five by seven at the same price point, right? Mm-hmm. But that is is extremely critical to have that integration on your website. Um, you know, a personal story for me was last year when I was in the process of moving. I contacted four different um, self storage facilities around my area because each one of them did not have the, their pricing or availability online. And it's like, you know, I don't want to pick up the phone and call somebody, you know, there's days where I could want to communicate with someone and converse, but there's times where it's like, I just want to do this myself and just get it over with. Right. I don't want to yeah, take sure. time out to phone uh, a facility and speak to someone and, and do that process. Right. I just want to hit the web page, find what's available, find what's not, and then I could just continue about my day. So it's it's extremely critical to have that uh, integration on your website. Yeah, absolutely. Now, now talking about like that younger generation and them wanting to transact through their phone or online, um, something else that, you know, I've got kids in that generation. So I, I know as a mom, how painful that generation can be. They want it and they want it now. Right. So let's talk about website loading speed. And actually I'm guilty of this too. I tried to get on a site the other day and after 10 seconds of the circle of death spinning, I'm like, 
yeah, I'm done with this. Like, and they didn't get my business because it didn't load within like three seconds. So Amir, I'll go back to you for this one. Cause we're kind of going round circle. To, let's talk about responsive websites and making sure that that's loading speed is uh, up to par. Yeah. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, Google picks apart all the websites, right? So there on the back end of your website is structured data. Aside from that, you know, that that's where Google kind of goes into the back end and actually reads that XML and says, all right, this web page is up to par. Um, but that loading speed is very critical, right? You don't want to have mass videos on your website. That's going to take up a lot of that loading uh, speed. The same thing goes to images as well, right? You don't want to have fairly large images that's going to take up a lot of that loading speed. Because just how you mentioned, Jessica, if I'm there waiting for five seconds, because how advanced technology is in today's world and where we are with technology in today's world, same thing with you, right? If I'm sitting there waiting for a web page to load after five seconds, I'm out of here. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going to try to find something quicker. Uh, mm -hmm. something available, right? So those are a few components that you definitely want to consider. It's going to be, if you want to have video imagery, you have to be very conscious about the size of the video, the megabits, how large that video file is. And the same thing goes when it comes to um, the imagery and the pictures that you're showcasing on the website. Yeah, definitely. Josh or Rodolfo, anything to add there? Yeah, I think it's it's definitely one of the one of the key ones is the is the page speed for sure and it's something we had to kind of wrangle with it as well with calculate as well because with calculate we wanted to add give you as much choice as possible so we've got 130 items that you can pick and choose from from mattresses and tables all the kind of common items that people put in the storage but at the same time we don't want to bog down your website and put 130 high quality jpeg image files that's just going to slow the whole thing down and mm -hmm. make it unbearable for the users. So we had to make sure that we were optimizing every step of the way to ensure that if someone clicks through from Google onto your webpage to use your size guide, to use your storage estimator, that they're going straight through, it loads quickly, it's fun and engaging because that's another key metric that Google are tracking as well. One thing is page speed and then the other thing is engagement. If there's mm -hmm. someone spending a long time on one particular page, there's multiple clicks coming through, that's, thumbs up all around from Google and that's how they know it's a positive page that people use. We should be ranking this one higher. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. Go ahead, Rodolfo. Uh, something else I, I, I'd add is, you know, to that point of uh, plugins or, um, you know, embeds that you add to, to your website, different, different tools, right? Mm -hmm. That's something that to, to keep in mind, kind of like what Josh was saying, you know, same thing with Swivel, right? We, it's just a couple lines of JavaScript, you post it on any website, and it'll work. Um, that was something that we also uh, optimize for ourselves, right? For our own product, making sure that that loaded quickly, and that didn't really affect uh, page speeds on your website. That's something as you're adding more tools, right? If, if you let's say you have a WordPress site, which they make it super easy to, to add uh, plugins, you know, you have to keep that stuff in mind. Um, even the order in the, in the background, the JavaScript, how you, uh, put the JavaScript and like what order your priority you give it, that all impacts, uh, page speed and page load. So, uh, keep that in mind. And then lastly, you know, to Amir's point, you know, usability and the experience is huge. And so don't forget that, you know, on average right now, 61% of all users come from mobile. Um, and so don't forget about mobile. Mobile is huge. Uh, people, you know, what do they do? They, they have a computer in their pocket, right? And so now they're like looking, you know, uh, on Google, uh, storage near me, right? That's like probably the number one keyword uh, to find you. You have to bid on that and um, and they'll look at your site on mobile. So make sure that that is optimized as well. At Swivel, we have embeds specifically for desktop uh, homepage and then also for mobile. So uh, the, the embeds are different um, and they're optimized differently for for whatever the, the platform is, so. Awesome. I'm gonna throw a quick question out here from the audience. This is from Ryan Foote. For a smaller operator, do you recommend building your own website or perhaps using one provided for your F, provided by your FMS? Josh, I'll leave that over to you first. I think if, if you're a smaller operator, then uh, what I would recommend is having a look around. And again, it kind of plays back into making sure it syncs up because if it's not going to do what you need it to do, further on the line, 
today you might be a small operator with one site and 20 doors and you can use an off-the-shelf Squarespace, you know, Wix, whatever podcast offer you've managed to pick up and, and get something up and running today. Really just make sure it aligns with the scale of your business. So if, you know, in two years time, you're going to have five sites. Can they accommodate five? Can that plug into a tenancy management software? You know, is there going to be something a bit more bespoke? Do you want to start offering packing supplies, which can't be added in as a, as a e-commerce plugin easily into the, the framework you've set up? The other thing I will kind of point out, and I'll throw this out as a shout out to my friends over at Stora. Stora do a very nice, clean, basic um, uh, website optimization for mainly for, for your single sites. It's come predominantly their bread and butter. And that's mm -hmm. got a uh, online reservation tool built in and they're specific for self storage. So yes, finding an off the shelf might be easier for you, especially if you're, you're just a startup, but that's not to say you have to compromise too much. And then just in the back of your mind, just think about well, where do I want to be in 12 months and will this kind of off the shelf solution suffice for me right now? Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and I think, you know, it depends on the size of the business, the size of the portfolio. Those do work well for smaller operators. But when you start to become um, a little more savvy, you have a bigger portfolio, you've got tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of doors that you're renting, you know, you're talking something different than like you were saying, somebody that's got, they're out in somewhere really rural with less than 50 doors, you know, just really depends on um, the size of the overall portfolio as well. So um, I'm going to put this up here and then Rodolfo, I'm going to have you go into chatting to us about what Swivel, uh, the Swivel product and what that is and what it does. And I know you want to share your screen and show a, a quick little uh, tidbit from one of your customers that Raheem puts up here, and I know why he did this. If only someone had built a chat bot that could <laughs> rent a unit online. Hmm. Well, hmm. maybe someone Interesting. has. <laughs> um, no, I, uh, Raheem, appreciate that, that question and comment. I mean, so, <clears throat> you know, chat bots, AI, um, AI and automation are uh, I, I would say uh, buzz term, right? But, you know, let's kind of start off there with automation, just high level, take a step back. Because um, we're starting to hear this word uh, used more and more just, just across uh, industries and, and across even outside of, of what we're doing at Sewell, right? You know, specifically in storage, you know, we see remote access, right? Light sensors, um, you know, security cameras like Ring, right? Um, that are motion detecting, um, and even on, on, for example, G5 side, uh, marketing automation on your website, right? So there, there's a lot of things that encompass automation. So in general, you know, automation is a tool, right? That is leveraged to take out the repetitive actions out of a process, right? So starting there. And so our focus um, is in natural language processing, which is a subsection of, of AI. Right. And so it's very similar to the technology that is used to build Siri and Alexa. Right. They're uh, built with large language models to try to respond to a question and whatnot. And so, you know, ultimately what we're doing is using uh, machine learning to, to understand what a customer is saying, uh, break that down into, you know, first, we need to understand what the topic of the conversation is. Like, what, what are they trying to ask for? And then two, are there any objects or data within that? Uh, so we're able to provide a contextual answer back, right. Or, or even learn from that. And so, you know, language is super interesting because it's, it's a very complicated problem. It's not uh, a lot of people, uh, think about it as, you know, keyword matching. Um, it really isn't that at all. It's looking at the entirety of the interaction to, to really learn what's going on. And so what, with that said, you know, we took that knowledge um, and past experience and, and build a specific uh, tool for self-storage. Uh, our AI assistant has a industry knowledge base, right, a data set to understand questions regarding anything from, you know, getting recommendation to, um, you know, answering, you know, do you have month to month or what type of lock? Uh, so things like that. And so I'm actually, as, as, we, as I kind of talk about this, um if you don't yeah, mind you i'll show the yeah share your screen yeah. so we can uh, I see, see that what kurt this looks is like. uh kurt is is here which is awesome yeah um so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and show 
Let me see if I can figure out this. I'm never presenting from my parents' house ever again, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> my dad comes in, my kid comes in, the cat's scratching at the door. I'm like, oh my God, get me out of here. <laughs> All right, we're so, going to add this up and then you can awesome. share. Go ahead. So we have a safe card over here. Uh, thank you, Curran. This is our chat bubble over here. You'll see, um, you know, if you're familiar with uh, other tools like live chat or uh, a chat bot, et cetera, you know, we're, we're a little bit different, right? Where live chat or chat bots are usually bun based and, and they only route you to a human. And so again, we're taking that to the next level by adding a little bit more of uh, artificial intelligence, right? Being able to, uh, you know, we still have buns to, to kind of provide your own kind of do your own journey, go go your own journey and, and, and kind of get the answers that you have. But we open up the, the message box to taking any type of questions. Let's say you know, I'm looking for a 10 by 10. And so on this side, it would, you know, go in and I already understand, okay, you're looking for a, a space as 10 by 10. Um, I go in and provide a zip code. As you'll see, by just uh, having a conversation with the bot, Kurt's team is already building a user on, on me without knowing my name and, and email just yet. Um, and I'm already, they already understand, okay, this user is looking for a 10 by 10. This is the location that he's, that they're looking at. So there's a couple of locations here and we can display uh, some of the locations nearby just from the home page. I can continue clicking down and I can actually even see the available inventory. So to somebody's question early about how important an FMS integration is, it's so important to be able to provide um, available inventory. Uh, I can go in and filter by 10 by 10. I want to look at climate control. For example, I see that's one. You have to see like, you know, uh, pricing for units change on a daily basis, et cetera. And even some some have limited, you know, hey, there's, uh, you have to show some type of um, a scarcity, right? Uh, to get someone to like click in and rent. And so it's super important to be able to provide all that um, and once I go in and I, I see, I say that I like this unit, we can not only answer questions, but also navigate someone to a specific store page and continue the conversation there. Now I can, uh, now that we understand a, the location that somebody's talking uh, about, uh, we can go back in and actually be more specific, um, about, you know, other questions that we might ask. So like, you know, what, what lock do I need, for example? And so. You know, and already, already here, it's already understanding. It knows that we're looking at this location and it's it's uh, responding, hey, for this location, you need a disk lock. So there's so much more that we can do here um, in general. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of background on what that is. And in our platform, we have all the information, all the analytics that you might need from how much we're automating. Uh, currently, we're averaging around 80% automation across our customers. Um, and a lot of the interactions that are coming into our system, 72% uh, are related to um, purchasing, high purchasing intents, uh, understand getting a recommendation, et cetera. And then 17% related to account management. So he us helping them, you know, pay online or uh, what to do if they, they don't have their gate code, things like that. Yeah, that's super awesome. Um, I, I love that. And I mean, I know you guys could go in way more depth than that. So if anyone's interested in learning more about Swivel and what they do and how powerful that uh, particular chat bot can be for your website, please reach out to me or Rodolfo. I can get you in touch with, with Rodolfo. Uh, all of his links will be listed on the replay of this um, session as well. But yeah, that was just a tidbit of it. Um, and that's a that's a really good responsive chat bot because I've been on some where it's like <laughs> you answer and it just keeps asking like the same question over. It's like not understanding and it's timing itself out. And then I end up just typing in all caps each time speak to representative because I get really frustrated. <laughs> so uh, good job on that one. Josh, I want to jump over to you real quick. And then Amir, I've got some uh, wrap up questions for you before we conclude at the end. Uh, now, Josh, you have a plugin for a website similar to Rodolfo's, like a chatbot, but different mm -hmm. as yours is a storage unit calculator. So talk me through that and then show the audience briefly what that looks like and what that can do as an add-on on the website. Sure thing. Well, I think what's probably best is if I follow on Rodolfo's lead and I also find someone that's in the comments section that has. <laughs> Jim uh, Moody's in there. I saw him. Yes. 
Jim. You can use Jim. Oh. Jim Jim doesn't mind being a guinea pig. Well, that's just as well. I'm just giving myself the permission to share the screen, which I'm telling myself I can do. Um, okay. Bear with me two seconds. As soon as that's yeah, done. Yeah, for sure. There we go. Success. I'm not seeing it yet. Interesting. Okay. How about? So while you're looking, I'm going to ask Rodolfo a question. Uh, here we go, Rodolfo. This is from Kurt. The new nice feature with Swivelbot is the ability to push potential customer information into SiteLink as an inquiry. So our store team can follow with the potential customer very quickly. Oh, so sorry, not a question. That's a cop. That's a statement. Right. Yep. So talk yep. about yep. that a little bit. No, Kurt, appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah, I, I didn't really uh, was able to talk fully about it. I didn't want to take too much time. But yeah, uh, we, you know, with any FMS, we have SiteLink, um, SSM, et cetera. Uh, we're not only able to display available inventory, which is important, but also be able to, uh, it kind of goes both ways, right? If there's a feature for the customer, and then there's a feature for, for your team, right? So you don't have to repeatedly you know, change that. All that stuff is updated on your end. Uh, lead information. You can use that to uh, send gate codes to uh, current customers. You can find if someone's delinquent, um, et cetera. So. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, Josh, we have you back. <laughs> um, it uh, had to restart Chrome in order to uh, to give the permissions, which is my least favorite feature. I think, are you on a Mac computer? Yeah. That's why. Technology, guys, right? You got to have it. When it works, it works. When it doesn't, <laughs> It's it a little wonky. All right, I see it. Now we can you can go ahead. There we are. Beautiful. So um, this is Jim's excellent website. So this is on one of his locations, just to give an idea. So if I was a storage company in uh, this part of the world, and I'm looking at all these different dimension sizes and thinking, well, which one of these do I actually need? Uh, the solution is that they can actually come through and use this calculator here, which is a software, and they can come through I'm going to cheat and use this uh, little preset button we have here, but effectively can choose everything that's available. That they're looking to put into the storage. As soon as I click calculate, we'll then do the stacking. So we'll make sure TVs don't go into washing machines, mattresses come in on the side like you would do in real life. And we can say, bam, there you are. Based on those particular items, you're going to need a 10 by 10. Or if you want to see the next size up, if you, know, you might want frequent access, you can see what a 10 by 15 would, would look like for you. And great, that looks fantastic. Now I can go back through and actually go ahead and, and pick the unit and um, and go through from there. So I guess I with taxi box, this was the one thing, this was the, the friction point, beyond all friction points for us that we, we just needed to address. It was causing the biggest number of drop-offs. As soon as people got to that stage of the website where we're asking them how much space they need, they just given up hope. So we needed something couldn't find anything to, to um, off the shelf that we could purchase, so we built it ourselves. As soon as we added it to Calc uh, sorry to the Taxibox website, we saw our online bookings growing 26%. And I think this kind of touches on the, the earlier comments we had where especially the uh, younger generation particularly just want to book everything online. They want the whole process to be like booking a hotel room or booking a flight, booking yourself storage unit, completely digital, completely online process. but. I'm not familiar with the industry. I don't know what all my items look like stacked on top of each other. So that's where the, the calculator came in. In terms Is of the, the setup, I was going to. So. No, I was just going to say, so for like the tenant, it's, I, I, I always like to call this the Tetris of self storage. It reminds <laughs> me of the game Tetris, right? It shows you exactly how you need to put stuff together, but you know, I probably wouldn't have thought like as a tenant, like, oh, I probably shouldn't stack my washer and dryer, right? It's just like something that wouldn't occur to me. So I love that it gives them the resource to know how to properly pack and get the most mm -hmm. uh, use out of their space. But then it's also a great sales tool and mechanism for the owner operator and for the website because, you know, me, I dimensions, I'm like a five by five. Oh yeah, I'm going to fit my three bedroom home in a five by five, right? And then I get there and I'm like, oh, probably not. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of other people out there like that. So it also eliminates the guessing game for somebody to go like, well, maybe I need a 10 by 10 or maybe I need a 10 by 20. I'm not really sure. Um, so I, I love your product. And we posted up there from Jim saying he's had great success with your company and product and highly recommends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think it just it really matches that 
that behavior of, of doing everything online, like I say, like, I occasionally get conversations with people like, oh, but our customers love calling up and spending 20 minutes on the phone with our sales agents running through the whole list of items. <laughs> I'm like, you may be the people that you speak to do, but no one is calling you up to say, hey, I don't really like talking to people over the phone, so I'm going to go with your competitor buy. They're just, yeah. they're just doing that. They're just leaving. So it's a, it's a whole avenue of, and an audience that you might not be targeting and you might not be serving, which you can quickly find out. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, just to quickly kind of show you what the setup looks like. So, oh, sorry. Let me go back. No, you're all good. There you um, go. Beautiful. So, in terms of the setup, we handle this all ourselves as well. So, you can set all your unit sizing and your categories, which are the items we have. We have like 130 you can pick and choose from. So, you know, we thought we could get away with just uh, our Diddy little fridges. And then a lot of US customers started laughing at us. So we put a, a proper fridge uh, in there for you. Uh, so you can customize and choose from all of that. And then the end goal basically is, so we have pages that run on WordPress, which we've, we've talked about WordPress before. So they that's where our service pages are held. And so this is the, the calculator here. It's just a copy and paste job to get it up and running. So it's not a kind of, big onboarding task to get this around. So, you know, we talked a lot about single site facilities and all this tech that's available, but can I do it easily? And is it, you know, affordable and, and easy to set up? We've tried to, to make it a five minute job to actually get this thing up and running for you and, and to be able to handle all that. So we can just get it in front of customers as quickly as possible. That's awesome. It's a super powerful tool. I, I really enjoy this tool as well and like it. Uh, Amir, I'm going to shoot this question over to you. This is from the audience from Ryan Foote again. What is the thought process behind being able to rent only certain units online and not all of them? I think that it, it really depends in your market in your area right? Because you also do want to have some flexibility when it comes to your other integrations, right? So Rodolfo mentioned earlier with the Swivel chat box, you definitely want to have some uh, integration there to showcase some availability within that chatbot as well, right? There's other operators that have uh, kiosks components, right? So there's, you definitely want to have that flexibility to be able to offer up your units in all the integration integrations that you do have. Um, so what I would usually say is probably if you're down to like, two units, then on your website, you could definitely easily place a call to action that says, you know, low availability, please call the facility, right? Or something to that extent. It's so like that if you do have some type of foot traction that goes to your uh, facility and they want to do something at the kiosk, there's some availability there, right? If you have the younger generation, you know how, how Rodolfo showed us with the chat bot with Swivel, right? You definitely want to keep some to showcase there as well. So like that, you can see where all of your customers are coming from, stemming from either chatbot, your website, foot traffic on the kiosk, and even rentals uh, over the phone, right? You definitely don't want to leave your managers on site um, hindered in a sense that if they do receive a phone call uh, from someone that's willing and ready to rent right then and there, you don't want the manager to respond back and say, hey, you know what, I actually don't have that size, um, you know, would this other size work for you? Or, you know, our competitor down the street has this size, right? You definitely want to have, <laughs> you definitely want to leave some flexibility in there for, for your other integrations and other components. Got it. We, we've got a guest appearance from Jackson today. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, let me ask you this, Amir. Um, if if somebody is like, they're, let's say they were talking to a website provider, right? And they are trying to figure out, because when we had our website redone, we had somebody redo it for us. And then we took over the management of it, right? And man, writing the content, the homepage, the about us, the my team, the just all of the different elements, the news section, the upcoming events, whatever it may be, like, what are some of those critical things that you feel like the website should have and then like the navigation bar should definitely clearly point out to the user that's using the website. Yes. I mean, there, there's a lot of different components that go into that, right? So there's definitely ways that you could either utilize um, branded copy or a universal copy, right? So those are different components that if it's more kind of like a branded copy, you want to keep the same consistency across all of your locations. If it's the about us section, or if it's something that's universal, then it's going to be pretty much the exact copy paste across all the locations, right? Um, I actually have an example as well from, from one of our clients um, to kind of showcase sure. 
um, some examples, right, of how we we also, you know, we've been in the industry for about 20 years and we've done kind of, I want to say social experiments, right? But we've done research on how people interact when they do hit the website, right? So there's different patterns that people utilize once they reach a website. And that's just kind of natural patterns, right? We all le read from left to right. When you go on your Google browser, right? Everything's kind of like your main actions are on the top left-hand corner, right? So I'll share my screen here. <clears throat> Excuse me. There you go. Can you see my screen? Hold on. There we go. Awesome. Right. Perfect. Perfect. So in this example, right, this is what we would call kind of like an F example, right? So if I, if I draw my cursor here, right, your first call to action is going to be right up here. Top left hand corner is where we would kind of recommend where you put your logo. And then this is the F pattern that I'm referring to, right? So if I go down here, every single point that you want to kind of draw in that F pattern should finish off in a call to action, right? So this last point here, <clears throat> excuse me, in this small F is gonna be this about us section, right? What do you guys do? Contact us, jobs, accessibility, right? So more to offer than just what units are available. If I draw across the, uh, across the top here, right? This is gonna be your payment portal. That's the, the top part of the F, right? Your payment portal, call to action for existing customers. And then the bottom part of the F is right here, right? So I'm, I'm on a corporate landing page so this is where you would showcase, hey, um, I'm interested in a in a unit at this state, this zip code, this city, and it will filter through all of the locations and then populate it in a map, letting you know which ones you're nearest to and which ones you know would be the most uh, convenient to you, right? But we we try to kind of approach it in different patterns because you know as humans we all have patterns, we all have uh, unique subsets that we have to cater to to make things easier for us to kind of move forward with. So this would be kind of like an F pattern. There's also a Z pattern if you think about it. So there's different components. Um, and the simplest one is would be something like this, right? Plain and simple, across the board, down the side, and then boom, your call to action right in the middle. Um, on a location website, we would kind of follow that same pattern, but instead of this uh, find location section here, it'll be a rent now or, you know, look for units, right? Getting that call to action to make sure it finishes in a rental or a reservation for, for those new, uh, new people coming through. That's awesome. Thank you for giving us that brief rundown. I, I love that site structure. It's nice and clean. It's concise, um, which is like critical components of this, right? And Amir and, and the other, uh, Josh and Rodolfo, tell me as we wrap up and audience, if you have any final questions, please get those in now because we are right at time. Um, but I wanna get this last question in and then we have a couple announcements for you. So please don't drop off yet. Stick stick with, with me another two minutes, I promise. Um, but how often, if somebody is like taking on the ownership of their website, it's designed for them. How often do you recommend they go in there and they update, update something on their website to keep it fresh and engaging? Is that like a weekly thing, a monthly, quarterly? What do you suggest? That uh, is a great question, right? Just because how consistently and how quickly things change in today's world, I would highly recommend to update the content of your website as soon as anything around that specific neighborhood updates as well, right? So if there's, you know, three blocks down a new McDonald's coming into place, you definitely want to update your website to mm -hmm. mention that activity as well. Hey, you know, three blocks away from the new McDonald's, right? Because keeping your website is something that needs to be done. Um, I would, I definitely won't say daily because that type of content where you can say like, Hey, you know, first time using a self storage, or are you moving in? This is like a checklist. Uh, that stuff is fresh and that actually is also not only helping with seo but you know providing value to a customer which you should be thinking about and then lastly let's say you have content that or a blog that has uh done really well right and has proven great for organic traffic um seo takes um probably a couple months really to, to really solidify and you start seeing the roi on that so a lot of people are always so um uh, against it or, or, or at least not not really against it but just they don't know that it takes it's it's an investment you need to like 
let it sit for a little bit to start seeing that return. And so if a blog mm-hmm. has been performing super well, um, you know, a couple months go back and update and make it and, and, and make it relevant to, to today. Um, that's stuff that you can definitely do. And, and, you know, I, I would encourage people to do. Yeah. And do pretty easily. And it's pretty cost effective, right? It's already there. You're changing up a little bit of the wording in it and then it's fresh content at that point. So that's the biggest drawback and hurdle I hear from owner operators is I don't have the time. I don't know what to write about. I'm not a wordsmith. What do I even write about? Um, And again, if that is you as an owner operator, there's plenty of agencies out there that can help you with that for sure. Josh, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, there was one thing I think key on to that point and uh, something that's been invaluable for us with taxi box if you are in that position you're thinking i need to be updating the website but i just don't know um what to put on there we've done two things which i think what same thing twice which i think is super useful so we now have a um an email that goes out to all uh past customers a couple of weeks after they've, they've moved out and it's a request to complete a survey uh for you know basic questions how did they hear about us what was the experience like? How was the website? All those kind of things. And we mm-hmm. also send that same exact survey to all the people that become a lead of us and don't book. We call them the never book group, which if anything are more valuable than the past customers because they can be more brutally honest. The amount of feedback we've got from that, we've, which we've directly converted into content, which is on the website. Like your pricing wasn't clear. So we created a page about storage rates and how our, our pricing is dictated that's then become one of our most prominent SEO pages for, for bringing in traffic. We wouldn't have thought about that if we hadn't have gone out and asked that, that survey to those people. This is an ongoing thing. It's all embedded and set up in our, our email server, so we don't have to worry about it. We just check back on the results every now and again and occasionally update the questions. But it's been invaluable for us for creating um, uh, blog content as well. Reasons for storage, all the downsizing stuff. We've now got a blog about what to do if you need to break your lease. All that kind of stuff has come out of this. It's been the, the kind of the, the seed that's allowed us to, to update and change things as we've needed to. So if you are in that position where you're not sure and you need to update the site and you think, you know, that there might be some, this would be where I'd start. You can kind of incentivize a little bit, give it, put an Amazon gift voucher in there or, a, um, you know, $50 off if you want to return and be a customer. It's nice and straightforward. Don't put too many questions in there, but I would recommend it very, very strongly. I have to say too, uh, Josh, that's a good point. Like um, we uh, recently had a lot of customers um, or we've been working with a lot of customers and their marketing teams because the wealth of knowledge that you can take from conversations, right? With our system and whatnot, you can start learning, okay, uh, for this month, this type of unit or this type of storage item was ranking super high. Like a lot of people ask about it, let's create content around that and so that has been uh, at least the conversational insights have been helping power a lot of this content strategy for marketing team so uh, really really interesting stuff that's awesome i, one, I love um, that one last thing i just wanted to add just you mentioned a yeah. lot of free sources out there right there is tons of it right mine for me personally is youtube um but one caveat to that right it's whether you want to do things yourself and save some money or whether you actually want to go about paying an agency and doing it. Oh, did he freeze on me? Right at the good spot. (laughs) (laughs) Or (laughs) while he comes back, I can hear you, but you're not moving, but keep talking. Go ahead. Okay. I apologize. (laughs) You're back. All right. So, I mean, I'm not sure what was what was the last one you caught but it's it's going to be YouTube, right? Personally for me, um, Mm -hmm. it's going to be whether you want to save some money or you want to get things done correctly and have to pay money for it, right? I go back to the example a couple of years ago. I was like, man, I want to change the brakes on my tire. I was like, but I don't have 400 bucks right now to just sit around and change the brakes. So what did I do? Went to the auto store for hundred bucks. I got the brakes. I was like, man, I'll do this myself. YouTube it. I spent six hours trying to change two brakes, right? And I mean, I did it correctly, but that was a lot of time and then I didn't have the right tools for it, right? So that kind of goes into play sure. where if I would have paid it someone, they would have had the right tools. I would have been done an hour or two, would have been on my way versus yeah. doing it yourself, right? So you do have to weigh and balance some of those things out. Is it worth the time, the effort uh, without the right tools, right? To get it done myself, save a couple bucks, 
or should I just go out, get it done correctly the first time, the right time, and then pay what I need to pay to make sure everything's straight from there on out? Yeah, totally agree. Well, guys, we are sadly out of time. This one probably could have went on for about an hour and a half, two hours. We could keep talking for days about this topic. Thank you all so much for joining us today. And just so the audience knows, if you missed any of this um, and you want to watch the replay, it will be available in the SBOA YouTube channel starting tomorrow morning. So guys, have a good rest of your Thursday. Don't leave just yet. I have a couple announcements for the audience. Rodolfo, Josh, Amir, take care. Thank you so much much for Thank joining you, us and helping us. me host. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. All right. A couple quick announcements and then I promise I will let you go. So storage for rookies is next Thursday, July 28th from 12 to 5. What is storage for rookies? Are you asking? Uh, earlier in the session, you probably saw the video. It is a new educational series put on by the SBOA where we have gathered experts to help newer owners and operators or investors that are looking to get into this industry, get in and get started right. We had a sister company called Storage Pros Management that has been around for 25 years where we purchased, acquired, built, land, found land, you name it. We did all of it. We self-managed, we third-party managed. Um, we were around for a long time. We had a portfolio of well over 100 locations. We have since then sold that entire portfolio, but are looking hopefully to get another one. So we feel like we're very versed in this space. Again, that is next Thursday, July 28th from 12 to 5 for newer owners and operators or even smaller owners and operators that are looking to expand their portfolio and how to expand it the right way. The ticket is $49. We're actually running a BOGO. So if you buy one ticket, you will get a free ticket for your friend. Then Self Storage Unlocked will be back on August the 4th, 2 p.m. Eastern. And that one is going to be strategies for delivering five-star customer service. We will be announcing our speakers um, and the registration information on social, on our newsletter, in our newsletter, I should say, and on our website. So if you don't follow us on social, please go follow us on LinkedIn. Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. That's where we reside currently. Um, and we have a great YouTube channel full of lots of information and a lot of these webinars that we have done in the past. So if you ever miss one, you can always go back and watch a replay. Uh, Jim Mooney and I are doing the Manager Summit at the Mississippi Self Stores Association show. God, say that three times fast. Um, on August 11th. So if you are in the state of Mississippi or you have a facility in the state of Mississippi, please come join us on August 11th. Again, Jim Mooney and I will be doing the manager summit. Jim will be talking about the operation side. I'll be talking about the marketing side. If you need information on how to register for that show, please feel free to reach out to me. I will get that information over to you. And then the big boy show is coming up. We have the SSA fall conference coming up in September. The SBOA will be there. We are at booth number 154. We're not speaking at this show, but we do have a round table. Um, and the round table is talking all about social media and how to keep it clean and concise and keep your content flowing properly. So please visit with me at the round table. That's on Wednesday, I believe from 4.15 to 5. Um, and we'll be doing lots of different events and stuff while we're out there. So we'll make sure to put all of the things that we're doing in our newsletter. Thank you guys so much for joining us again for another Self Storage Unlocked episode. I will see you back here on August the 4th. Have a great rest of your day and a good weekend. Take care, everyone.